this is Tom and Tom from Media Walls at Interiors for Living and today we're going to show you how to build a media wall. When building your media wall, you will need an electrical supply for your appliances. You will need a double socket for your TV and any other appliances and you will also need a few spur for your fire. We recommend using a fully qualified electrician to carry out your electrical works. So the first thing to consider when siting your media wall is the wall construction. Is it solid brick or is it stud and plasterboard? This will determine the type of fixings that you use to secure your fire to the wall. Run your tape measure from one end to the other and then divide it by two. This will give you your centre line. Mark it on the wall and then draw a straight line with your spirit level up the wall, the full length of the wall. So we recommend sitting the fire on three breeze blocks. This would give you a rough height of around 300 millimetres off the floor. Now most floors aren't level, as you can see this floor isn't level. So what we have are some packers to put under one side of the fire to bring it to level. Under the fire you have two small legs that protrude out from the bottom. It's important to get any packers that you've put underneath under those two legs. Once your fire is level from left to right and front to back, then you can start securing your fire to the wall. Because this fire is the 1800 model, the halfway point is 900. So I'm just going to draw a mark at 900 along the fire on the top in pencil. So as you can see, we've just laid two offcuts of timber at either end to give us our distance for our back piece of wood. So we're going to measure the distance of the wood and then we're going to find our centre point, which is here. So now I'm just going to use my adjustable set square and draw the centre line on square to the piece of wood. This will then allow us to get the piece of wood exactly in the centre of the fire. As you can see there, we've got our centre line on our fire and we've got our centre line on our wall. So we know that this wood is exactly in the centre of the fire. This particular wall is of stud and plasterboard construction. I've marked some two lines where our studs run up the wall. So what we are going to do next is we are going to secure this piece of wood to the wall with wood screws into the studs. So the next stage is to start constructing the base of your fire. This is so that it gives, finishes your fire off around the bottom. How we're going to do it is out of timber and we're going to do it the full width of the wall underneath. So as you can see, the base has been constructed out of C16 timber stud. This has then been screwed together with wood screws. The screws that we've used, are, there's two types. We've got an 80 mil wood screw and we've got a 100 mil wood screw. We've used 100 mil when we're going through the double depth and we've used 80 mil when we're just going through a single depth. Yep. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna secure the base to the wall just with simple wood screws into the stud. So when constructing the base, how we've measured it is we've measured it from the floor and allowed room for plasterboard to slide under this lip so it gives it a nice finish once completed. We've left a small gap as well at this edge so that the plasterboard sits flush so that that can just be feathered off with plaster. So this is the back of our media wall. What we've done is we've put two struts across the back, the width of the MDF, which is going to support your TV, just to give that extra stability and something to screw your MDF to. We've now constructed the top part of the media wall. We've got uprights, which run from the top of the fire to the ceiling, and then we've got uh, returns that run between the two. We've created what are essentially boxes, so you've got a box for the bottom and then a box for the top. 
and the sides are the same construction. They're essentially boxes for each side. Every single media wall will differ in sizes depending on what fire, what TV, and so on and so forth. Another thing to consider when um, sighting your sockets is that they're not in the centre. This is obviously where your bracket, TV bracket, is going to go in the centre. So it's ideal to have it either way, which is most convenient to you down here, left or right, or up above, left or right. Another important factor to consider is mid supports. When you are putting your plasterboard on the front, you need that support in the centre so that your plasterboard doesn't bend for when you're plastering. So how we've placed these back supports on for your plasterboard to run onto is you just put a square on the front piece, flush with your backboard, and then that will give you the height behind then so that you get everything correct. And the same goes for the top. So for this back piece of MDF, uh, it has to be structurally strong enough to hold the TV and the bracket because that's all that's going to be holding your TV on. We recommend a 12mm MDF, but that's subject to how you want to do it, provided it's structurally sound and it's going to support the TV and the weight of the bracket. The height from your viewing pane of your fire to the opening of your uh, TV surround recess will determine on the angle at which you want to view your telly. Some people like it higher, some people like it lower. Obviously, if, you, if you're sitting quite close to the fire, you'll want it slightly lower. If you're sitting further away, you probably want it slightly higher. But that, again, is down to your discretion. How we've constructed this particular one is flush to the sides. However, you can have a slight overhang, but you would not be able to go any further back onto the fire than flush to the sides. This is because the plasterboard needs to run flush up the sides and go to this lip. So part of constructing this again is determining on the width of your TV. Obviously a smaller TV, you've got to have a wider jaw on the side. If you're going for a larger TV, obviously now they go up to sort of like 90 or 100 inches, that would exceed the width of the fire and then you wouldn't have a jaw. So then you can, again, build out slightly further, which then would give you a bigger recess above. So due to the constraints of our fire and the size of the TV, we're having to double board this side to make the gap around the TV big enough for us to be able to get our fingers in. We don't want it too big and we don't want it too small. Essentially, what you're looking for is around about 30 mils all the way around, uh, give or take. It's your preference as to, what, as to how big you make it. Essentially, what you need to be able to do is fit your fingers into the side to be able to pull the TV in and out and adjust. So as you can see, we're now towards the final stages of the build. Uh, we've completely cladded the framework in plasterboard. We recommend using 9mm plasterboard throughout. That just leaves you enough to get a, a skimming lip on here. There's a little lip on the front and that just allows you to get a run of skim along the front. Um, obviously we use plasterboard screws to fix it in place. Uh, the next stage is then to start putting the edge bead around so that we can then go on to the final skip. The um, TV bracket will go on before we skim and we'll hang the TV on to make sure that it all fits correctly and then the TV will then come off but the bracket will remain while we plaster the front of the wall.
So as you can see now, we've got the edge bead all the way around the fire, all the way around the base. Um, the type of edge bead that we've used is a uh, corner bead. Also, if you are going to have a soundbar installation down here, around the MDF opening that you create, you will need to put single edge stop bead so that plaster has got something to skim to. The type of uh, jointing tape we've used is just normal self-adhesive scrim tape, and we've put that all the way around the joints. Anywhere where plasterboard meets plasterboard, we've put a piece on and also around the beading. And then that'll just, again, allow the plaster to skim over the top without it causing any issues. We've got to the last stage where the TV is hung. Um, the bracket that we use is a fully actuated bracket, so it pulls in, it pulls out, it can tilt either way. It also has left and right, up and down, and front to back movement as well, so it can be fully adjusted into the opening uh, that we've got here. If I tilt it this way, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that from there, but we've got the sky behind, and also the bracket as well. Um, Obviously you've got your power, so everything's behind there. You can also, depending on where you put these and where your services come in, you can also put uh, a PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox, whatever you want behind here. They all come with, um, or you can purchase online a bracket, a sliding bracket for each of the individual consoles. And then the TV just tilts back and pushes back into the opening. It does take two people to do, so just be aware of that if you're trying to do it by yourself. Uh, that it does take two people and then yeah we'll just adjust it slightly make sure that the gap around is even on both sides and there you go that's your TV hung so now we're going to put the logs and the crystals on the fire uh, there's just three little screws here uh, underneath that drop a bracket off So as you can see, we've attached the glass clamps to the front of the glass. What we're going to do now is just tilt the glass forward so it clears the front here and then we're just going to lift up and then secure underneath. Never lift the glass with just the glass clamps, they do tend to slip. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got all the logs that are ready to go in the fire. We've got the crystals, these are black and clear, we've got the vermiculite and we've got the continental logs. You can set these logs out however you want in the fire. Uh, there's no set design, so it's your own personal choice. What I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with the black and clear crystals and I'm going to put a bed of those on first. So what I like to do when I'm setting the fire out is I like to cover, look in the back glass here and you can see the LEDs shine out. If you put the crystals up against the front of these, it just kind of cuts that glare out a little bit. So now I'm going to start laying the log bed out. As I said before, there's no set layout for these. Okay, so now we've got our logs set up in the design that we wanted. Uh, you can spread, it's optional again, you can spread a little bit of vermiculite in between the uh, crystals, just gives the, coat of the fire bed a nice little effect uh, shining through. When you are filling the vermiculite, try to take care as this is the lip where the glass sits. If any vermiculite falls down there, then you will struggle to get the glass back in. What you can do though, it's easy enough just to vac out. So you just run your vacuum across and it'll just pull it all out of there.
So thank you for watching. Uh, this was the Ferez 1800 uh, into a media wall. The last stage is now uh, for either yourselves, if you're competent enough to plaster it or get a professional plastering to come and finish it, and then obviously decorating. And now we have the finished media wall, which has been plastered and painted.